So in this video, we're going to talk about your memory in the hippocampus. Okay, what is the hippocampus? Hippocampus is a, a structure in the brain. There's actually two hippocampuses. They're, they're a structure in the middle part of the brain, and they come from the Greek word, which means seahorse, because they look like seahorses, okay? They have a role in memory, short-term, long-term memory, and spatial memory, which is navigation. So let's say, for example, you're going to find out where you parked your car. Like if you have a hard time finding that or locating yourself in time and space. So let's say you're, uh, someone gives you directions and you just cannot find your way through uh, town. Uh, that's why we have a GPS, right? But the point is that this right here is controlled by the hippocampus. If you lose the function of the hippocampus, you develop Alzheimer's. So they don't know exactly what the hippocampus does, but they do know it has a role in memory and retrieving data. Okay, so that's all they know. Uh, dementia. So you get dementia, a loss of memory, and, and realize that Alzheimer's starts really early in life, like in your 30s. You start having memory loss and it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. I believe it starts in the womb because when your mother is carrying you and she's eating junk food or a lot of carbs and then you get put on formula and not breastfed, I think that can set you up for Alzheimer's. That's just my theory because of what I'm going to tell you right now. The way that you destroy the hippocampus is you load it up with too much insulin and of course, you know, sugar in the diet. So too much insulin or too much sugar will cause the shrinkage of your hippocampus. So it's really important in a, um, if you're pregnant or you're going to have kids to make sure that we keep the carbs to a normal level, not go overboard. You want to especially do quality carbs. And then the formula is just filled with sugar. So you want to do breastfeeding. And if you can't, you need to make your own formula to make sure it's really high quality. And I'm going to put a link down below if, if you are in that situation. So I really believe it starts very, very early in life and that can set you up for a weakness. So you want the bad news or the good news first? Let me give you the bad news. I already told you high insulin causes uh, an atrophy of your hippocampus. Okay, that's one piece of bad news. But the other um, piece is high cortisol will shrink your hippocampus. So it's a combination of stress and sugar, okay, and refined carbs. That's what does it. That's what affects the memory. Now let's shift to the good news, all right? Here's the good news. The hippocampus is one of the only areas in the brain that can experience neurogenesis. In other words, it can, it can actually grow back. You can actually make new nerve cells in your hippocampus. That's exciting. So regardless of where, what happened to you as a kid, you can still improve things greatly. And one of the ways that the body does it is through something called BDNF. That's called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which basically is a, uh, a brain chemical that helps the communication between the brain cells, the synapses, okay? And the way that you trigger this is, there's actually five ways. Fasting is the most important and most powerful uh, method of regrowing your brain, okay? Especially the hippocampus. You can actually stimulate stem cells, which is basically undifferentiated, kind of like cells without a purpose that can turn into new brain tissue. And as we age, it goes down, but if you do prolonged fasting, so fasting a little bit longer every so often, you can greatly improve your brain. Apparently, when you don't eat, your body helps the brain get smarter to find food. It's a, it's a survival mechanism. So it's not good to eat so frequently. And then some people wanna know, like, how do I know if I have high insulin? Very simple. Look down right now, if you see that you have a belly, you have high insulin. If you do, click the link down below. You'll see a link that says healthy keto intermittent fasting. Start watching those videos and learning about how to do it. So you can actually flatten the stomach through get, lowering and normalizing insulin through food. All right, so now we have number two, aerobic exercise can actually uh, help you expand and increase the size of your hippocampus. That's cool. This is walking. I've been telling you this for a long time, go on these long walks several times a week. Very, very important because you get all this oxygen with low cortisol, low stress. Very cool. Number three, vitamin B1, thymine. If you're deficient in B1, 
it can set you up for Alzheimer's because it creates damage within the mitochondria, which is the energy factory within the brain. So that's what sets the whole thing off. So B1 apparently protects the cells um, and other factors in the brain against the side effects and damage. So B1 is very, very important in preventing dementia. If you look up something called beriberi, you'll see one of the side effects of B1 is memory loss. This is why. So how do you become B1 deficient? By consuming too many refined carbohydrates and sugars. You need to start taking B1. I like uh, nutritional yeast because that is a natural source. You can do synthetic, but also do nutritional yeast at the same time because you don't want to do synthetic for a long period of time. I do recommend synthetic for short-term periods, whether you're doing a detox or some type of program, but make sure you have the other complex with it so you don't create an imbalance. Number four, avoid stress. Okay, that's lowering cortisol. Easier said than done, but you got to work on that. All right, number five, lower the carbs. Run your body on ketones. That is an alternative fuel. When your body doesn't have enough carbs, it's forced to burn your own fat. The byproduct of that is ketones, so that's the fuel source. Ketones are much less stressful to the brain. Your brain cells love ketones. The hippocampus loves ketones. There's a lot of research being done now by uh, giving uh, Alzheimer patients ketones and they seem to do much, much better. So because it provides uh, less stress on the brain. All right, guys, this is what you do. Go ahead and do it. Thanks for watching. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications. Daily notifications, that sounds weird. Well, I'll just remind you on a daily basis. How about that?